While hundreds of thousands thronged the Esplanade, many Roxbury residents waited here. The high school stop was a chance for the community of color to welcome a hero. And in a neighborhood known to outsiders more for poverty and crime, Mandela's visit offered the opportunity to showcase the community's strengths and talents. The performances were a tribute to Mandela, but his plane arrived late at Logan, and a luncheon at the Kennedy Library ran long. So at every stop, he fell further behind schedule. Still the faithful here waited. For hours, they chanted his name and embraced his battle for a free South Africa. The temperature inside soared, but no one left. Mothers fanned their babies, men sweat in suits and in dashikis. Teenagers waited with patience beyond their years. Finally, word came that Mandela had arrived, and the room erupted in response. The ovation lasted a full five minutes. When Mandela was finally able to quiet the crowd, he spoke of the struggle in South Africa and of the importance of sanctions. But for this audience, he also had another message. We are deeply concerned, both in our country and here, of the very large number of dropouts by school children. This is, this is a very disturbing situation because the youth of, the, of today are the leaders of tomorrow. Mandela's emphasis on education was important. Most of the kids he saw here are in Boston public schools, where the dropout rate is nearly 40 percent. The reason for our children leaving school at the very elementary standards is because of poverty and frustration. But we would like to advise you to try as much as possible to remain in school. It was hot, Mandela was late, and he spoke only briefly. But for the crowd here at Madison Park High School, this was the high point of Mandela's Boston visit. And along with his message, they'll remember the glorious noise of their own aspirations. We love you. For the 10 o'clock news, I'm Meg Valancourt.